When it comes to designing things for your comic, avoiding things like same face syndrome, or having some variety in your worlds and everything, what is the best way to achieve all of these things? Reference. And we're gonna talk about reference today, why it is important and how you can use it in the best way. Welcome back to Pencils and Stories. My name is Henrika and I make and teach comics. And if you wanna make your own comics, then subscribe to this YouTube channel for weekly videos. First off in this video, I wanna get this out of the world uh, for once and for all. Uh, I am a very big fan of using reference. And if you wanna be a professional artist, then you should be too. I personally believe that thinking that reference is cheating is a beginner artist mindset. I'm still not sure where it comes from. Uh, I think it stems from non-artists, to be honest. People who think that art is just something that for some very mysterious reason we can do. We look at things and we know how to draw them and stuff and it's just not true. That is not how it works. And even though there's a lot of artists who look like they can draw everything just without using any reference, without looking, they don't have those images in their head like magically appearing. They are not people who look at something once and then they can draw it for the rest of their life. Maybe, maybe there's artists with like a photographic memory or whatever. If that's the case, that's very, very rare. And I would say that most artists don't have this ability. But also, they have used reference for the majority of their life. There's no other way that they could have developed this skill. So if you see an artist who just can't do that, and you think that you need to be able to do that too, you don't go to a museum, look at a bougaro, and then say, well, apparently that's the way how I should paint, and I should be able to do it immediately. Like, nobody thinks that. Because you know, looking at that, that they they practiced their butt off and they made lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of paintings to be able to get to that level. It's the same with people who can draw things that you are like, how do you even draw that without reference? They just don't, they're not magically born with this skill. That's not a thing. It just doesn't work like that. And also, why do we expect artists to be able to do everything immediately without looking at stuff while well, you would never ask that of another person like sure just go and dance the nutcracker you're a dancer you should be able to do that by watching it one time and then immediately you know how to dance that stuff doesn't work like that the same goes for art um also all the pros use reference like they will all of them will tell you that they use reference they have and if they like draw something without it they know how to draw it because they've drawn it so many times from reference. They know what it looks like. They've studied it. And that idea, that pressure you put on yourself, uh, it will definitely stunt your growth as an artist. It will keep you in, like talking about things like same face syndrome. That is literally a symptom of not using reference. You have an image in your head of what a face looks like and that is what you draw. If you always draw the same nose and you don't know how to draw another nose, what do you do? You look at a ton of pictures from people. You go into Pinterest or you go, you know, look at street photography or, or something that have like a, a variety of people and just draw their noses and really understand how a nose is built up so that you can play with all the different elements of a nose. You cannot do that without reference. I'm just reiterating the idea that you have all of this creativity, that you can just look at a nose, you immediately understand what it is, you can put all these variety and shapes and stuff. And of course, you build up skill as you go. You learn design principles as you go, of course. And that's why a lot of pro artists are fast and they don't have to look at something like forever to just be able to draw it and stuff. And they know how to turn things in their heads. But that's a skill. That's a skill you develop. Just as you develop knowledge of color theory and you develop anatomy drawing and all that stuff. But all of those things you do with 
looking at reference as well. But the idea that you just know is a non-artist idea. Uh, we get told this, like I have been told this. I have been drawing and then, you know, using reference or using even guidelines. Using guidelines in drawings shocks people because they're like, but you're not able to just draw it and i'm like no you actually need some construction and i've actually had people tell me well that just takes the creativity out of it and i'm like you really don't understand how this works do you and then they tell beginning artists this stuff like i've heard about some very professional artists who are just able to draw so many things just on the go they will all tell you like i was looking at things all the time and not looking at it like wow you know, here is a, um, it's like a speaker, a nice roundish kind of, what do you call this? A cylinder, cylinder kind of shape. Uh, and it has like a plus and a min and a minus on it, you know, and then just draw it. No, they will go, okay, what are the shapes? It's like this shape here, but it's also, this shape is kind of like slanting. And then it goes into a little, like almost like a little bit of a bowl shape over here. And they will look at how it's constructed and exactly how it is um, made up and which shapes are in here and how the light is hitting it and everything. It's a very specific kind of skill to develop, like just the looking at things. That's the skill you need to learn. And then eventually that becomes just a second nature. And I think that is where you develop the skills of either being able to look at something sh for a short amount of time before you're able to just draw it, but also just you know, you, you look at a shape, even though it's very complex, you just understand, immediately understand which shapes are, are in there. But that's a, it's a very high level skill that requires a ton of practice. And it requires you to deliberately look at reference and deliberately practice and really, really try and hone your skill of being able to deconstruct something to its basic shapes. And sure, eventually you'll get to a point where you can just draw things because you know how that, like I can draw a face and I have enough variety, I think in my comic characters that I can make them look very different from each other and stuff. That was not the case when I was younger. <laughs> All my characters look the same. And that is because I had no knowledge of design. I had no visual library of how things, how different things could look and how much variety a face could have. That is something that I needed to study and I needed to learn. I could still draw things from fantasy, but then you you really need to be to be okay with things not looking realistic yet or not looking like you want them to. So a thing like all your characters looking the same is because your brain has stored one picture of how something like a face or, or a, a character, how it looks. Um, like the same with like every single how to start drawing book, they have a staple character in there, a staple human. And oftentimes that staple human is stored in our brain. And that's sometimes called a symbol. It's like symbolism drawing. When you're drawing, you're not drawing, you're not thinking about what you're drawing. You're just thinking, oh, it's a face. So the eyes go like halfway to head. And then halfway of that is the nose line. And then, you know, the, the corners of your mouth go into the, the middle of your eyes. And that's like a staple face. But that means that all your faces will look like that. And like roughly in realistic humans, that's what it looks like. But you can play with all of that stuff. And that's how you, when you look at reference and you look at many different faces, you will see all kinds of little varieties on that. Um, and that is when you start to see the possibilities of where you can take everything. And then, then especially in like character design and very stylized stuff, you can even like exaggerate all of that and play with that. That is how you hone your design skills. And that's how reference makes you a better artist and helps you learn. Um, but also it helps you design things faster because instead of you having to think about, oh, well, what does a garage look like? What is in my garage? What is in other garage that I've like, you, you go on this whole like thinking route and then you probably start drawing the same things over and over again. But just look at a bunch of pictures from garages. Like what is in there? Why do people store the stuff in there the way they do? That will give you all kinds of new ideas, will give you very unique um, 
uh, like the opportunity to make something very unique because you're like, oh, and this and this and this. And then you can think about, well, what is the garage? Uh, what is the function of the garage? And I'm trying to depict like, what is the character? What, who are the characters that use it? You know, and then you start thinking about that and then suddenly you can make it very unique. So how do you use reference? Because a lot of people think that reference is just using it and then copying certain things from it. Being able to use reference walls also a skill. If you want to do it really right, and sometimes with comics, you don't necessarily have the time to do everything, but for an illustration, 100%, I would like recommend gathering as much reference as you can. So you're not just taking from one or two images, have a ton, take tiny elements of it, and then put your own spin on those elements. Make sure it's unrecognizable in the garage example, maybe look at other kinds of rooms and try and make something unique of the garage. Um, maybe you want to make it a super fancy garage. So you start looking at, you know, some some fancy shop, like decoration, like it, uh, interiors and stuff. And you take elements from that and put it into your garage. Um, you know, th uh, that's where your creativity can come into play as well in using your reference and in doing your research. And slowly you will, f you will see that you will be able to draw more and more and more just from your memory or take more creativity. Just look at a piece of reference and completely make your own thing out of it. It's all skill, but it doesn't fall out of thin air. And reference is not cheating. All the masters used it. All the pros use it. And look at how pro artists tackle certain things. How how does a professional concept artist draw a dragon? You know? Um, and then try and analyze like, what did they use? Did they use lizards or maybe even other kinds of animals, like super creative animals? What kind of textures did they use? You know, look at... I love looking at other people's like uh, sketches, concept arts, thumbnails, all of that stuff. I, I love looking at it because it shows their thought process. Um, and all of the pros use reference. Just get it out of your head that it's cheating. Like, why put that pressure on yourself to be able to know everything? Like, it's a very weird thing to, to say to somebody. Well, you just should just know how everything looks. So go use all the reference. Uh, if a drawing isn't working, you probably need it. Um, if you have same face syndrome, you probably need it. If you don't have enough variety like in your worlds you don't know what to put in your worlds and in your backgrounds you need reference so go use all the reference just don't copy it don't like, like take a design from somebody else and play with your own it's like a big no no don't mindlessly copy photos photos have copyright as well so yeah just be inspired and use it as as study and information um yeah, that's all I had to say about reference. I just need to get this off my chest. I see it, still see it too much. Like this whole idea of reference is cheating. And it's just, it's not. And every single pro artist uses reference. So I really don't understand where this idea comes from. Drop the guilt. Using reference is also something I really, really emphasize in my new course, which is how to start your comic. It's coming and I have been working on lessons about reference. That's why I'm... Uh, that's why I'm very passionate about this subject at this very moment. Um, but you can uh, you can get notified when my new course launches. If you want to start your own comic, you don't know where to start and what to think about and what to how to how to properly start and prepare, then this course will be perfect for you. I take you through the entire preparation process and through the basics of how to make pages, and it's all laid out in modules. I will take all of the guesswork out of it for you. So if you want to be notified the when the course launches on Kickstarter, you can go to howtostartacomic.com. For now, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this one. And also it really helps me get bumped up in the YouTube algorithm. So it starts recommending my videos to people who might want to make their own comics as well. Likewise, if you know any people who want to make comics, then please send them the way to this channel. <laughs> Have a great day. Go and make some comics.